looking at other factors that affect communication, um, we specifically chose history, values, religion, and rituals for the South African culture. Okay, two terms that were often used to describe the African culture are, they called them Boers and Afrikaners. So I just looked at what the differences are between the two. And Boers are Afrikaner farmers who descended from Dutch, German, and French settlers. And Afrikaners are just the African speaking people. people. So uh, Boers are always Afrikaners, but Afrikaners might not always be Boers. Um, and so therefore from their descendants, they're predominantly white people living in South Africa and speaking African. Um, and so this kind of creates the first factor uh, needed towards discrimination, which is contact of two different cultures coming together. Um, and then a quote I found um, taken from an academic journal of the African affairs that was called Whiteness, Racism, and Afrikaner Identity in Post-Apartheid South Africa says, just as I cannot change the color of my skin, I cannot become an American, European, or Australian. I would be an alien forever, like a polar bear in the Pretoria Zoo. My soul is African. My skin color is the only European thing about me. The National Party was the political group that represented most of the African um, and Afrikaner populations. Um, and it lasted uh, governing in South Africa from 1948 to 1994, and then eventually in 2005, it was completely disbanded. Um, and so three of the main policies they had um, included the apartheid, and that was the segregation and racism that was created by the government between the white minority and the rest of the South Africans. It stopped things like interracial marriage and social integration between races, um, and there was some segregation that happened uh, before this came into play, but now segregation was a part of the law. It also created uh, the South African Republic. So they voted in May of 1961, um, and the votes were only done by white people because of the segregation and the apartheid that was taking place. Um, and they, they made this South Africa a republic, which basically means that there's no king, there's no monarch, and the power lies in the government which should be uh, chosen through the people. And it also promotes the Afrikaner culture. Um, and it, so it started creating an unequal power difference between the Afrikaners and the other people of Africa. Um, and it started to create some discrimination. Uh, it really created the stereotypes, the ethnocentrism, which is viewing your own nation or group of people as superior, therefore having less concern for another group of people. Um, as well as unequal power. And these are three out of the five factors that lead to discrimination on that situational and sociological uh, perspective model, um, which eventually leads to discrimination and then prejudice. So this really set up um, the way for discrimination to be taking place in South Africa. Okay, now looking at the values of the African culture, um, one is that they really value ind individualism. Um, they care a lot about each person um, being unique and doing their own thing and maybe helping with their family, but really focusing on themselves. Um, they're also, also a very masculine culture, uh, very comparable to the United States. When I was researching um, the culture, there was a lot of movements, um, like feminine movements that are very similar to the ones happening in the United States right now. Um, they're also more authoritarian, which means there's a high power distance between um, the people in charge and just the regular civilian. Um, and this really led the way for the apartheid to be so successful. Um, and historically, uh, the things that they valued, which also really made way for the apartheid, is nationalism, religion, cultural purity, autonomy. Um, and all of these things working together um, really formed the the model where discrimination happens before prejudice with the situational and soci sociological perspective, um, which really affected the way they communicated because there was discrimination taking place in the culture um, and prejudice eventually did form. 
The religious climate in South Africa is predominantly Christian, according to the most recent census that was taken in 2001. Um, there's a lot of different denominations of Christianity, um, no particular leading one. Uh, following Christianity is Islam, Hinduism, traditional African religions, Muslim, Judaism, and Bahi. As you can see, there's a lot of different religions in South Africa, mostly due to the growing number of immigrants that went to South Africa. Um, these immigrants initiated a social and cultural ordering within South African culture. Uh, this caused a large social change over time with the growing numbers of religions, some kind of dying out, um, just a lot of change going on with all those immigrants coming in. Uh, traditional African religions were dominated and eventually acculturated to these new religions. This could have been because of a more critical approach to ethnography where they were given the illusion of choice um, with these more aggressive immigrants regarding religion at least. Uh, more recent surveys point to a growing number of Muslims and various other religious groups, people from religious groups converting to Christianity. Um, it also showed a, a pretty big fluctuation of church-going citizens throughout the past decade or so, which I thought was interesting. The large amount of immigrants coming to South Africa was something that changed how the culture did rituals. Um, and most of the major rituals in South Africa are based around religion. Um, so this Akui um, ritual on the left is predominantly in South Africa um, because it's part of the traditional African religion, but it still exists in South Africa today, so I included it. Um, in this ritual, participants embody a deity or an ancestor in energy or state of mind by performing specific movements or dances while drums and instrumental rhythms provide a sort of meditative trance for them. This ritual is very symbolic um, because they embody someone else or something else. Um, and it's been said to create clarity and direction for their community as well as their personal lives. Um, the ritual on the right um, is Hindu. It's called the Holi, or was originally known as Holika Festival. Um, it was brought to South Africa with the growing amount of Indian immigration, um, especially before the spread of Christianity, but remains um, vastly popular today. A lot of tourists come to South Africa during this time to participate. Uh, this ritual involves pr preparation and collecting wood and making lots of food and drinks. Um, the women typically provide or uh, make a lot of the food and drinks the day before. Um, there's a large, a large bonfire the night before the festival. Uh, and this symbolizes a victory in good over evil and a devotion to God. Uh, many people use this bonfire to light small fires in their own homes, and it really brings everyone together the night before. The day of the, ce <clears throat> the, day of the celebration is um, very fun and full of tension release for everyone involved. Everyone sprays color water on each other, they dance, they drink, they laugh, and they socialize. Um, that night is more sober. Uh, people meet up with relatives and friends. They exchange sweets and um, greetings and a lot of other phatic communication. Uh, this ritual is very important because everyone gets involved, uh, not just those that are affiliated with the Hindu religion. Really, everyone in the community comes together to celebrate. Uh, it really generates a feeling of brotherhood and warmth, and this is essential because um, their society often deals with a lot of conflicts.